14,200 feet. That's the summit of White Mountain. It's also the end of California's highest drivable road. From the rocky parking lot, you're exactly 253 feet below Mount Whitney, the tallest mountain in California and the lower 48 states. On a clear day, you can see Death Valley to the south and Yosemite National Park to the north. But getting to the end of California's highest road is no easy task. It's um, just a, it's so unmaintained and awful and bouncy and... Ugh. The nearest paved road is behind a lock gate seven miles from the summit. The rugged landscape is home to bighorn sheep and around every steep switchback there's a chance fallen rocks are in your way. You head, you can get head rush. Yeah? Oh yeah. You uh, feel a little loopy here, <laughs> don't you? Yeah. Steve Devanzo and his dog Sugar are with the University of California White Mountain Research Center, and he's one of the few people actually permitted to drive a vehicle to the summit. And that loopiness that I'm feeling is actually the beginning symptoms of what could turn into altitude sickness. Yeah, it's just hypoxia. The percentage of oxygen is the same in the air, but there's less atmosphere, so you're actually taking in less oxygen. Compared to standing at sea level, there is 42% less breathable air on top of White Mountain Peak. Hypoxia affects people in many different ways, and we made it. hypoxia is actually one of the main reasons that this road exists. What were they doing up here? Um, they were doing human physiology studies on, on subjects, on human subjects. Subjects were required to spend 20 days restricted to the very top of the mountain. In 1948, White Mountain Peak was a Navy research facility, but then in the 1950s, the University of California took it over and built several high-altitude testing laboratories, including this one, the Summit Hut, at the top of White Mountain. Oh, yeah, the, uh, the amenities, they're, they're limited here. Human testing at the White Mountain Research Center has helped scientists get baseline data for all sorts of research. Research used in high altitude flights and the early space race, but the focus has always been on understanding hypoxia and the severity of altitude sickness. It happens a lot and people die. It, you know, it's like your brain swells up and your head and, and, or your lungs fill with fluids and if you can't get them out in a certain amount of time, they're basically dead. About 1,500 feet below the summit hut, modern hypoxia studies regularly take place at the Barcroft Station. Scientists from all over the world come here to gather baseline data that can be used in medical treatments for all sorts of illnesses. So there's certain conditions like COPD and COVID that manifest as hypoxia. So when we do research up here, we can look at a healthy human model and try to figure out the normal way people respond to hypoxia. Although university researchers are the only ones allowed to drive up California's highest road, it's perfectly fine for anyone to walk the seven miles to the summit. And for her 69th birthday, Sarah Warmbrot did a little hypoxia research of her own. It wasn't bad. Not too bad. I mean, it really wasn't. You just keep going, take a few breaks for water, and just keep moving. And mountain biker Casey Shefstein got a different result. How was your bike ride up here? It's a lot of walking for a bike ride. Oh. <laughs> Hypoxia affects humans in many different ways, and that's why it's so difficult to study. But thanks to this long, bumpy road, scientists have a pathway to new remedies. From the top of White Mountain, California's highest road, I'm John Bartell. Hope to see you on the back roads. <laughs>